right, let's look at, uh, at this one. This is another example, and it's, it's a little more complicated because it has two quantifiers. Um, there's two variables, y and x. The statement or the open sentence that we're interested in is p of x, y, which is just y cubed equals x. But the quantifiers are for every real number x or for all x, there is a real number y, meaning there exists a y, so that y cubed equals x. So what are we really, let's think a minute about this statement before we try to figure out what its negation is. Um, what we're saying, if you, if you read it is, pick any real number that you want, like 47. Does there exist a real number y whose cube is 47? In other words, what this is asking is, can you solve, so it's true, if you can solve the equation y cubed equals x with a real number y, no matter what x is. Because x is, can be any real number, that's what for all x means. And there just needs to be one y, so can you solve it? And you can, uh, because every real number has a cube root. So you could let y be the cube, I mean, that's the solution. You let y equal the cube root of x, this exists for any x in R. Now, how do we know that? We actually know that if we have to go back and maybe look at uh, the graph of y equals x cubed, which we know looks something like this. But this is a little bit confusing because here I've got y equals x cubed and here I've got y cubed equals x. So let me cheat and draw the axes sideways. and draw this as y cubed equals x. And then the question is, if I pick any x here, can I find at least one y? So no matter what x I pick here, so any x here, is there a y so that y cubed equals x? because that's what being on this curve means. It means that y cubed equals x. And because the cube, the cube function goes off to infinity in both directions, that's true. So in fact, this is a true statement. There is a cube root for every real number. If you tried to do this for the square, for, for the square instead of the cube, of course, you'd, you'd have a problem because just as a side remark, the, the parabola for y cubed goes like that, and so the, the negative numbers don't, uh, you can't solve the equation. If, if you have y squared equals x, then if you picked an x down here, there wouldn't be a, a y. Uh, but for cubes, it works. So what's the negation of this statement? Well, it, saying that for every, you can solve the equation y cubed equals x for every x, the negation of it means there's some x for which you cannot solve the equation. So you could start out by saying that the negation is there is an x so that there does not exist y in R with y cubed equals x. In other words, there's some x which doesn't have a cube root. But that's a little bit of an awkward phrasing, so you could carry this part a little bit farther. So instead of saying there does not exist y in R with y cubed equals x, you could say instead, leaving the first part alone,
for, you could say instead for all y in R, y cubed is not equal to x. In other words, you could change the statement, there does not exist y in R with y cubed equals x, to for all y in R, y cubed is not equal to x. And if we go back to the fancy um, symbols, what we're saying here is that if you negate for all x, there exists y with y cubed equals x. You change the for all into a there exists, the there exists into a for all, and the equality into an inequality. So this is worth thinking about if, uh, if you find it odd. But um, so the, if I tell you that every x has a cube root, I'm saying that for every real number x, you can solve the equation y cubed equals y. There's at least one y that solves that equation. If that's false, then I'm saying some real number x doesn't have a cube root. So there exists an x. And then instead of saying so that there does not exist a y, I could where y cubed is equal to x, I could say instead for all y, y cubed is not equal to x. Let's look at a couple of conditionals. When you negate a conditional, um, then there are several different ways of thinking about it. But maybe the most common one is to say that, uh, rem to remember that when, one way to think of p if p then q is to think of it as either p is false, because remember, if p is false, then the implication is automatically true, or q is true. And we checked this on the uh, looking at the truth tables. So I won't go through that again. But this means that if you negate an implication, you can use de Morgan's laws and say that if P implies Q is false, what that means is that P and not Q can be is true. So why is that? Let's look at this sort of silly implication. If I own a car, then I am from South Dakota. I mean, that's obviously not true um, in general, um, but maybe I should have said if, if a, uh, let's do it. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. If I, so what is the negation of this? So one way to think about this, the first of these two things is to say, either I don't own a car or I am from South Dakota. That's what, the, that's what this says. These two things are the same. If we negate that, then uh, it's a, negating an or becomes an and, and it negates the two pieces. So the negation says, I own a car, and I am not from South Dakota. So what about if there's a quantifier here? What if it said for all people x, if x owns a car, then x is from South Dakota. What is the negation of that? So this is now a for all statement. And remember that oftentimes when you write a conditional, there's an implicit for all. In this one, it wasn't so implicit because I talked about I. But if I had said, if someone owns a car, then that person is from South Dakota, there's kind of an implicit uh, that the someone could be anybody, any person. Well, when you negate this, um, this, this, if this were true, it would mean that if I give you any person and you can check and see, do they own a car? And if they do, then they're from South Dakota. If they don't own a car, you can't conclude anything about them. How could that go wrong? The negation of that would be
the negation would be, well, first of all, there would have to be a person, there exists a person. And if we look at the implication here, it would be who owns a car who is not from South Dakota. So if I claim that if any for any take any person in the world if they own a car they're from South Dakota and we want to see what the what it means for that to not be true the negation of it would be not would be just if there's even one person who owns a car who's not from South Dakota then the rule that I told you the promise if you like is false and so the implication the statement becomes uh, reversed namely uh, the implication becomes false. Let's finish this pretty long discussion with a complicated example where we have an implication with multiple quantifiers. This is a very common sort of uh, structure in calculus. For every real number epsilon, there is a positive integer m for which x bigger than m implies f of x minus b is less than epsilon. So the first thing to notice is that this is a for all epsilon, epsilon bigger than zero, that's the first statement. There exists m and z, m bigger than zero, because it's positive. And then we have the punchline or the actual, uh, op there's an open sentence. And it says, if x is bigger than m, then f of x minus b is less than epsilon. And here, although it's not said, f is a function, and b is just a real number, which is some constant. And the first thing to realize here is that although it's not specified, this if, which is the innermost if, has an implicit for all x in R. This is one of those situations where people tend to omit the for all x in R, but it's very important that you remember that it's there. Now, this is something where it can be helpful just to work through the formula and then try to figure out at the end if it makes sense when you want to compute the, neg the negation. So the negation of for all epsilon bigger than zero is there exists an epsilon bigger than zero. And the negation of there exists m in z is for all m in z m bigger than zero. Now, I'll, I'll make a remark. And then finally, we have this for all x in R. So there exists x in R. And then we have an if then, and remember, the negation of an if then is that the first is true, P and not Q. So this is the negation of this. And so if we think of this as P implies Q, this is P and not Q, which is the negation of an implication. So what is this uh, saying? It's saying that the, the negation of this says there is an epsilon so that for all M, there's an X so that if X is bigger than M, so that if both X bigger than M and f of x minus b is bigger than epsilon. So you notice that because you've got a there exists epsilon and there exists x, you need to have an actual, you need to show there is an x and an epsilon become fixed numbers. But m could be anything. It has to be for all m. So here you're saying that no matter what epsilon you pick, you can find an m so that no matter what x you pick, this condition is true.
as long as x is bigger than m. The negation says there is some epsilon that you can pick so that no matter what m you pick, there is some x for which the condition fails. Let me just make one more remark about this, and we'll see many more of these examples, and they, they merit more discussion, but for now I think we're going to leave it here. And that is why when I negated for all epsilon, epsilon bigger than zero, didn't I say there exists epsilon, epsilon less than zero? Right, I'm, or less than or equal to, because I'm supposed to be negating things. And the answer is because what is this statement really saying? It's really the statement for all epsilon in the set are bigger than zero. And when you, the, the entire quantifier here involve, includes, when you negate for all epsilon in a set, the negation is there exists x epsilon in that set. So remember that you can think of this as, say, as a, like when, when you have for all, it's like an and. Every single epsilon gives you a statement and you've anded them all together. When you negate that, you get the statement for every single epsilon, but they're ORed together. But you consider the same collection of epsilons. So the when you negate the quantifier, you do change the for every to a there exists, but the set of epsilons under consideration doesn't change. Okay, let's stop there.